Marvel and DC Comics can be a lot of fun. They've got a lot of timeless stories and some really iconic characters. But every once in a while, you want to spice up your life a little bit and you want something different. You get a bit of superhero fatigue. And I'm here to tell you about some comics that I've been reading recently from Image Comics that have just been phenomenal. And I think you should maybe check them out as well. So welcome back my fellow comic book friends to Comic Casper. Let's kick it. Alright, the first one on my list that I've been checking out is Napalm Lullaby by Bengal and Remender. This one really took me by surprise. I'm really enjoying this. I'm about four issues in right now. The artwork, although it may seem a little bit minimalistic, it still is highly effective. The characters are very emotive. The inking, I think, is what makes the artwork really stand out. It's beautiful and it almost looks like it's some sort of an anime. And it kind of flows like one as well. The action set pieces are really great, very stunning. The storytelling is unconventional and that's what really grabbed me at the beginning. It hooked me in because I was trying to figure out what is going on, who are the main characters, who should I root for. It had my head scratching a little bit and the world building takes its time. It sort of throws you in into the middle of this world that you know nothing about. I think that's part of the mystery and part of the appeal that keeps you going. The short of the long is it's about a couple of characters called Sam and Sarah. They've got some powers and they're going to take on a god. I think that's all you need to know. The rest you need to check out for yourself. These next three books are written by the same writer, that being Jeff Johns. And we got Rook Exodus, we got Geiger, and we also have Red Coat. Now, what is amazing is the quality of these books, not just in the storytelling, but the beautiful, phenomenal artwork. Okay, let's start off first with Rook Exodus. Oh my god, when we're talking beautiful artwork, you cannot go wrong with Jason Favreau. I am just astounded by the sheer level of artwork that he can pump out. It's just so beautiful, highly detailed, and it's got incredible inking, very unique story about a planet that is dying, it's falling apart, and the people that are left on it that haven't quite escaped are either looking at ways of surviving on this planet or perhaps building a ship to get off the planet. Well, that is what our main protagonist is striving for. Now, these people that are also on the planet that are left there, they have these helmets that allow them to control animals or have a deep connection with them. Each helmet is very unique and can control a certain type of animal where those animals can help them in different ways, right? For instance, if they want to be defended by those animals or hunt with the animals, whatever it may be, you have like a strong connection. With Red Coat being the next one here, such a different protagonist. It's got more humor more than anything else and it's got a twist on history. So it's, you know, about this character here referred to as the red coat. Now, Brian Hitch is on the artwork. And what really surprised me about this is, you know, I've seen his artwork and I haven't been totally blown away. But for some reason, in here, it's just phenomenal. It's like on the next level. I don't know what he's done, but his artwork just looks really, really exceptional. So basically, Red Coat is about a guy who's sworn to the British Empire in 1776. And he accidentally stumbles upon a ritual that is happening by this secret cult. And he manages to become immortal by this ritual going wrong and hitting him by accident with like special spiritual energy and um he just keeps coming back to life. He cannot die. So it takes us through the different time periods. Or, well, really, it fast forwards about 116 years later. And, you know, he's getting up to all kinds of shenanigans. He's not your hero, per se. He's not your stereotypical hero. He's more of a coward more than anything else. So you can imagine there would be some funny storytelling with a guy like him who is uh, always running away from various situations. But at the same time, he's had a lot of time to learn how to defend himself and how to stay alive I suppose. Not that it means anything because he can keep coming back to life. And what's unique is you know there's various funny twists on history and famous historical figures throughout the years that are inserted in this. Intelligent piece of writing, fun book, funny protagonist, it's good fun. Geiger is the next one of these three. We've had Geiger before. It was really only a six issue series and then it got like a special comic after that. But it's not really a reboot but it's a continuation if anything else from those previous issues. So if you can get your hands on like the trade paperback or the deluxe edition that came out not that long ago, I highly recommend it to see if you would like to continue with this story. Now, I absolutely love it. Gary Frank is giving us some phenomenal artwork. Just beautiful, just stunning detail, and it just 
works in this story. So Geiger is a story about, well, it's about the world more than anything. That's a little bit apocalyptic, dystopian, because there was a nuclear fallout and it's turned the world basically into Mad Max. But we have one guy here, our main protagonist, who's basically radioactive man, and he's fighting in this wasteland with whoever is still alive. And the world building is exceptional. And I gotta say the world building in all three of these series is top notch. Highly recommended. Void Rivals is up next and that one is by god what is his name oh, 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 oh. A few minutes later. Void Rivals by Robert Kirkman. I've been catching up with this one. I gotta say, at first, I thought the story was a little bit generic. Nothing too exciting. Nothing that was blowing me away that was happening. So basically, the theme is sci-fi and the premise is two individuals that happen to crash land on a particular moon and are from two different worlds which are at war with one another. And these individuals are sort of forced to work together if they're going to get off this moon alive. Now you can imagine all sorts of shenanigans that are gonna happen when two enemies are forced to form an alliance. Now, by the way, I didn't know this, but this is happening in the same universe where Transformers are as well. So you get a lot of references to that and you get some Transformer cameos. It's pretty cool. I didn't think it would work this well. The story really starts to heat up in these few issues that I've been reading. So I'm up to about issue 10. It's awesome. As with a lot of Robert Kirk stories you can't go wrong and this one is no exception at first I thought it wasn't anything special but now it's really starting to cook and it's fun it's fun pacing is just right now if you want to switch your brain off a little bit enjoy some nice artwork and some pretty fun stories that are within the spawn universe then I would recommend King Spawn Gunslinger and Salmon Twitch all three of these can give you something very different and you can jump into them you're not going to be too overwhelmed by the big universe that is spawn King Spawn and Gunslinger are about 30 issues deep and Salmon Twitch is fairly new so King Spawn is basically a spin-off from Spawn. I have been enjoying that a little bit more than Spawn because it have a bit more freedom with the kind of story that it wants to tell. And I think maybe that had something to do with Sean Lewis being on the title. As for Gunslinger, we've always continuously had beautiful artwork on that book and it's still gorgeous. It's basically a rougher protagonist from a distant past that is looking at avenging his dead sister. A decent vengeance type of tale. Sam and Twitch is the next one. It took me by surprise that it is so different from the Spawn books, but it is happening in the same universe. It looks like Todd McFarlane really wants to expand on his universe. It appears to be a lot more intricate in its approach, more character building, and it's about solving various murder mysteries. Not too too much has happened, but it's unraveling at a slow burn type pace. And I think that's perfect for the type of story that it's going for here. If you like procedural criminal type stories, then I think Sam and Twitch will be right up your alley. If you like something a bit more grittier, well-written and edge of your seat stuff, then I would recommend The Deviant by James Tynion. This is freaky as hell. If you like criminal stories that are a lot grittier, a lot darker and a lot bloodier, then this is the one for you. So it's taking place in, well, I guess multiple timelines with the current one being December of 2023. But it's basically about a killer back in 1972 in Milwaukee in December who committed some horrendous murders of young boys and the murderer was dressed up as Santa Claus. Now, apparently that murderer was caught, is in prison and is being interviewed by our protagonist, which is taking place in the present day in December of 2023 or January 2023 somewhere around that timeline. This murderer that's in prison is pleading guilty this whole time. He has for, for many, many years, for many, many decades. But the kicker is that these Milwaukee murders have resumed 50 years later by a guy that is also dressed up in like a spooky Santa outfit with a really creepy mask, by the way. So it's very mysterious as to why have the murderers commenced once again? Who is the murderer? And is the current murderer that's in prison guilty? 
I guess read to find out. I'm five issues deep. This is a well-told story. I find the dialogue very engaging and the creepiness is definitely turned up to 11. Speaking of creepy, we're still on that bandwagon with World Tree. I've been catching up with this one. If you want horror and sci-fi meshed into one really well, then this is for you. Now, it's not for the faint of heart. I gotta warn you, it's quite graphic, but it does tell an awesome story about a group of individuals that happen to come by the Undernet. So the Undernet, what is it? Well, I think the story is still trying to unravel what it is, but it's kind of like a super duper evil internet that is infiltrating our world and consuming individuals to do horrible things but also it's like letting through terrible things into our world it's like a parallel dimension via the internet but it's a lot more than that it has a lot of interesting characters all thrown in that play very important roles around what is going on here you know we got hackers we got fbi we've got ceo tech billionaires at play here we've got a whole bunch of people that are somehow involved and intertwined and interconnected just like the internet in this story and it's being told so well and great horror i'm not a big horror fan but this has got me sucked in. I want to throw in some extras. I've got no one here. This, you're gonna need a little bit of brain power because there's a lot of moving parts involved in no one. So it's got like 15 or more characters that you kind of need to keep track of. And it's about, it's about a lot of things. Okay, so it's mostly about a killer behind bars, but also a copycat killer that's at large. And it's about a superhero vigilante that's trying to fight the copycat killer and it's about a group of journalists that are trying to decipher what is going on here it's about the police officers that are trying to figure out who this vigilante is but also who this killer is it's got people that are somehow linked to the killer it's got a lot going on if you like a story with dense dialogue and mystery and a bit of action thrown in here and there this is for you it's definitely for you if you love solving mysteries it's a lot to take in though you're gonna have to pay attention a lot and really think about what you're reading. So you gotta have to be very switched on with that one. But I think it's quite rewarding at the same time. Uh, this other one here that I just started is called The One Hand. Now apparently you need to read six fingers hand in hand, no pun intended, but like together side by side. So you need to read issue one of this, then six fingers, then issue two of this, and then six fingers, and so on and so on, right? Now this takes place in a dystopian future and it follows a detective who's trying to solve some crazy ass murder mystery and the murderer is leaving these cryptic codes on the walls i can't quite tell you yet more than that but it just seems very captivating from the very first issue and i want to get the six fingers ones as well to complement it so this is why i haven't gone past issue one but man it seems really good the reviews have been great could be something special but these are some recommendations from image comics i highly recommend all of these i've had really good fun with a lot of these especially the jeff johns and the jeff James Tyne and stuff. That's just top tier stuff. Really good storytelling. You know, if you want to break away from your superheroes from Marvel and DC, this is where you go. This is what you read. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Let me know in the comments below. Are you reading any indie stuff right now? And what is it? And I will catch you soon.